Okay. So something happened that I was not prepared for. I had a lot of <laughs> uh, thoughts when I had first heard about it. I was excited, but I was I was pessimistic in trying to revive such a classic. And of course, when it was first announced, I think you had told me mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And I remember yep. being like, "Wait, what? They're they're doing X Men, but from '97." And you were like, "Yeah." So fast forward a couple of years. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah, my daughter was born in 97. <laughs> and d- today, the first two episodes of X-Men 97 dropped. And I got to say, man, I am blown away. Literally blown away. What were your first impressions? First of all, what, what did you think when you saw the trailer? Because I want to give you my thoughts before we even get to the first two episodes. What was your thoughts when you saw the trailer? So instantly I recognized that the animation was way better. But that's to be expected. A lot of time has gone by. Uh, a lot of different techniques have been used um, and learned and all of that. So I knew it was going to be good uh, as far as the animation itself. Um, I, to be truthful, I wasn't sure what direction they were going to go with, with, with the story. But, of course, that just adds to anticipation of what the uh, show was going to be about. Not necessarily something that makes me hesitant. The thing that I think made me a little hesitant about whether or not this was something they should do is, are you going to be able to get all of the voices and and the voices that you may have to replace because maybe some of the voice actors aren't around anymore or can't physically do it anymore? Um, Are you going to be able to find suitable replacements that's going to still give us the same feel? So these were the things that I I thought about when I heard the trailer. Because, listen, when I watched the trailer... Uh, Wolverine's voice sounded odd to me, and really all of their uh, voices um, sound like they weren't mixed right. And maybe my ears are sensitive to that shit because, you know, being audio a, engineer. A, the audio engineer and recording artist for all these years. But they, And also being just a, a, a cartoon fan, like, I know there's a certain sound, a certain way the voice is supposed to sound in these cartoons to give it that nice little blend. And it it wasn't doing it for me when I first saw the trailer. But I still was excited, though. Right, because yeah. um, th- this show is a huge uh, part of. I was a grown man when the show came out, and X Men was like the top at the top of my collection. Uh, I was collecting all the X Men titles at the time, especially Wolverines. So for this to be, you know, a cartoon, and by the way, it started out at on, in the evening. It came on in the evening. I think the first two episodes came on in the evening before it went to Saturday morning. And um, for for this to be something that they were doing, I was looking so forward to it, and it captivated me. So the fact that they were going to extend it and then uh, basically tell the, the story where it left off in season five, which was a bad season, by the way. But where yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. it was a bad season. Yeah, it was a bad season. I was excited, bro. I, you know, I was, ex- I was excited for it. And I'm happy to the report. I'm I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Okay. So so my initial uh, reaction and impression of the trailer was I didn't like the animation at all. Mm, I okay. thought the animation looked way cheaper than the original animation. Mm. Uh, I thought there was a, a downgrade. I, I've heard that before. That's what I thought. And then I also thought the voices, there were, you know, Wolverine's voice obviously stood out in the trailer to yeah. be like something I didn't recognize. Um, and then a couple other people's voices where I'm like, okay, I could see it's the same actor, maybe a little older. Okay, that's totally cool. I have no issue with that. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying that I had all of these issues because, like you, season five in the original series was pretty bad. Yeah. And I think the times were changing and people's interests were changing and that show probably got as much out of it out of the four years it got. Um, Having said that, I wasn't sure if this was even necessary. Mm -hmm. I didn't think reinventing this sort of style of X-Men was, you know, after the Avengers have now kind of taken the crown as Mm -hmm. the whole sort of Marvel's first team. Right. And that does change uh, often. It seems it goes back and forth. Yeah, yeah, but but now that 
the Avengers has kind of had that. I thought people's appetite for the X Men basically extended to Wolverine, mm-hmm. and that they really didn't care about anybody else. Right, right. right. Um, but now, after watching the first two two episodes, just generally. <laughs> I'm really excited with what Marvel can do with this animation and everything that I had an issue with. I, I, it was just premature. It was my, it, I, maybe there were things in the, in the trailer that weren't mixed very well. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that. The final product yeah. is amazing. Yeah. It's um, amazing. I will give it right now. Uh, I mean, I give it an a plus for what yeah. I saw. Yep. Um, but let's kind of start, I guess, you know, with a couple of things going through the episode. Yeah. For those who don't know, X-Men 97 is on the the Disney Network. Um, go check it out. If you haven't, this will be a spoiler heavy. Yes, it will. Super yes, it will. spoiler heavy. So we're, we're, we're warning you now. Red alert. Go, ch- go check out the actual show before you actually listen to the rest of this because I don't want to ruin anything for you. Absolutely. And it's got some stuff that you don't want ruined. All right. Yeah. I gave you your warning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. The animation and sound are actually pretty amazing in this show. I listened to the, ep- I watched the episode with headphones on and mm. I, I will say that it was really good ear candy. There was a lot of ear candy in it. The, the theme that they went with for the updated theme, I didn't love it at first in the first Same. episode, Same. but in the second episode, I actually kind of yep. liked it more yep. and it's I, starting to grow on me. So, same response. So, so I think you and I are probably going to be the same in that. I thought that the presentation of the look, the sound, and the theme yeah. felt like the anima- animated series of the 90s. It, it absolutely did. And, you know, like you, I thought the appetite for this sort of thing uh, had waned because of, you know, the, all the MCU stuff didn't focus on X-Men because they couldn't use the X-Men. Fox um, owned the movie rights to the X-Men, so they pushed a lot of the heavy focus on the Avengers. And this is what I want, this is what I, I have always thought before even there was an MCU. I always felt as though the, uh, the X-Men were a better team. I thought I felt they were a better trained team. And this is coming from somebody that's read, I read, I read both titles, right? I mm. felt like the way the X-Men work together, the way they work with their powers in unison, and a lot of the feats that I've seen them accomplish by, by pooling their powers together, I felt like that a lot of that was just a, more impressive to me and showed more teamwork to me than the Avengers really ever did. Hell, than the Defenders ever did. I, that's why I think at one point, X-Men was the premier team in Marvel because they just had this overall feel. So that went away. We got to watch uh, the Avengers do their thing. And I enjoyed the Avengers. One, my my, uh, fav- my once favorite character in the world is on the Avengers team. But right. that's the, I could say the exact same thing for the X-Men, because at one time, Wolverine was my favorite character, right? Right. But I had walked away from a lot of it. You know, I still was reading the comic books, keeping up that way, but they weren't the prominent thing out there in these other venues, right? And then all of a sudden, they announce this, they drop it, I watch it, and bro, I'm back on my X-Men shit again. I'm back on my X-Men shit again. Oh, yeah? Yeah! I'm back on it again, bro. Okay, okay. So, so I don't look. The last X Men that I I remember seeing in comic form was like AVX and like the whole Civil War thing that they were a yes. part of. Yes. Um. Obviously, Marvel took the Avengers into their own sort of Civil War version with it that didn't have anything to do with the X Men. And mm-hmm. of course, we all know in the in the in the regular Civil War there was a lot of X Men involved in that. Yes. Um. However this the way that they were doing this i it felt like they didn't okay so it felt like you could possibly see the avengers show up in this sort of show because it yes. had the, the the visual theme of yes. uh, J- uh what was the avengers show that they had um the uh, uh earth's mightiest heroes yeah I, I think that's the second one the second no, one earth mighty heroes is the first one the second one is avengers assemble that's the one yeah. that it felt like it looked like the most mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, and then of course the actor voice actor. So I said in the, in the initial sort of blurb of this, that I didn't like the way that, you know, the animation looked and I didn't like the way a lot of the voices sounded in the trailer. Uh-huh. That being said, 
the voices and the sound and the music, everything in this first episode was tuned and pristine and I mean, just so good, bro. I can't think of a yeah. bad thing about it. It was just so well mixed and 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 well refined. It felt like they'd been doing this for two years. Yes. I'm glad that it was as polished as it was. It was definitely polished. And also, um, this is the thing. I think the reason why uh, the last episode um, of the original series was that last season was so bad because one uh they didn't plan on doing a fifth season that was all caught they kind of had to do they rushed to do that mm-hmm. two the other reason is um at this point in time marvel had to rely on other companies to do its animation right but now marvel has its own animation company and it's you know it it cut its teeth with the what if series right so it's a they, great series, by the way. Great series, great animation, and because they, all that stuff is in house now, um, they have more control over it. And for a long time, bro, I mean a long time, Marvel was I wouldn't even because I didn't even consider Marvel second to DC's animation. It wasn't even second. I've seen other animated um, companies that did better than a lot of Marvel's stuff. I think now. Marvel can at least be in the conversation. They need a few more um, series. They need a few more series. And mind you, I'm not even. I'm not even talking about the story. I'm talking about literally how this shit look, how yeah. it looks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not it, not to turn this into a, a DC Marvel thing at all, but that's the one thing DC got right. Yes. Was their anime, man? Their animation was absolutely amazing. Everything they did looked and sounded and moved and was fluid and was lore and and Man, DC really got that right. So Marvel does, they do have the work cut out for them if they're going to try to take that title, but this was a good effort. Yeah. And, and what if was a good effort? Yeah. Yeah. They need a few more. Uh, to me, in order to, in order to beat uh, DC's animation uh, overall, you got to show us you can be consistent with good stories, good series, and we need multiple series. We need multiple series. Like right now, it's two. And I, I'm not one of the, I'm not the type of people, person that um, once somebody does something once good one time, I'm willing to proclaim them go, nah, because that could have been luck. Yep. Can you consistently belt out series that make me want to watch and keep watching? And I can't argue with the voice acting. I can't argue with the animation. I can't argue with none of that. Because right now, DC is still goat animation. Yep. Period. Point blank. It's and to me, it's not even close. No, not right now. It's not even close right now, right? But this is the those the last two, what if and this one, the X-Men 97, are great efforts. And if they can continue to do that, well, I don't know, uh eight more. <laughs> give me, give me eight more. Something. <laughs> right. Give me yeah, eight more. Seriously. You know? Seriously. Um, so let's kind of start, I guess, at the beginning of the first episode. And, and I guess I, I got a couple of notes that I had about okay. some of the characters. First, obviously, it wouldn't be the X-Men without Cyclops. Of course. I think most people would agree he's the face of the X-Men. He well, is, uh, eh, maybe. Well, I mean, obviously, Professor Xavier. And people like to say Wolverine, but he was an Avenger and he was a Justice whatever, what a flight, Alpha Flight Alpha or whatever flight, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like he was... He was a bunch of different things. Scott was an X Men. That's true, but I would right. I would argue that even with Wolverine, um, his time with Alpha Flight isn't even recorded in Marvel history, except for they talk about it. It's all off panel. It's all oh, okay. off panel. Like it's not like we have books where you have Wolverine right there with Alpha Flight. No. Oh, okay. Nah, and nah. and Puck and Puck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right when we first saw Wolverine. He was beefing with the Hulk. They sent him to kill the Hulk. And that was in the Hulk's book. That was the first time we saw Wolverine. And then after that, he was connected to the X-Men. So, I, and he became the most popular X-Men. I think the thing with Scott is, Scott, you can't really have the X-Men without having Scott. Like, Scott is, just even his, his presence 
And I know a lot of people say Cyclops is a cop. <laughs> and I, I've heard a lot of people say that, right? Mm-hmm. But you got to understand something. He was raised to be a certain type of way. And when Charles Xavier was out of the picture, that's when we really started to see Scott Summers and what he could be without that. And this is where we are right now with this. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to save just that for one quick second because, you know, bef- before we even get into, that, I was going to say that you're dealing with a Scott Summers and an X Men in this theme that they reveal it on you very early, which yes. is, and you alluded to this, is that the professor is not here anymore. Right, right. Professor Xavier has been murdered. Right. It, it happened off panel, but it, they kind of alluded to it in the end of season five, right. Of the yeah. original series that he, yeah. um, something had happened to him except they wanted to make it permanent. Now, I think in the original series, it was something to where like he, didn't he get sick and have to be moved to another planet or something? Yeah. What, what happened was Bolivar Trask, uh, shot him with this thing when he was up on a, um, on a stage having a presentation. And before this moment, um, Nobody knew that Charles Xavier was a mutant. Nobody in the world knew that he was a mutant except for the people that knew. And that exposed him as being a mutant. Basically, what that gun did was amplify his mental problems to the point where he couldn't control it, right? And it it, it, was, it injured him grievously. He was going mm-hmm. to die. And they contacted Lelandra eventually. Got a chance of to the contact Shi'ar her, Empire, the right? Shi'ar Empire. And they took him away. So for all intent and purposes, the world thinks that Charles Xavier is dead. And uh, the thing about it is I have to watch it again, but I want to see if they even reference that he was taken away because that's what happened. He was literally taken away. Mm-hmm. And you see that final scene in, in, in the fifth season where they're all standing there in a row looking up at the sky as the ship takes them off. So I don't remember them referencing him being taken away. I got to watch it again. Um, but the way it was played in his first ep- first two episodes is he's dead um, because they even had the last will and testament thing. But to be to be fair, the X Men keep a lot of things under the vest, so maybe they wanted the world to think he was actually dead. And if the world thinks he's dead, then of course they're going to go through the process of last will testament. Now, because Charles Xavier was a wealthy man with a lot of assets, right? <laughs> and so, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he had a lot of people who benefit from him dying, yeah. you know, financially and monetarily. Yeah. But they from they they the story in this goes that he was murdered yes. by a friend of humanity fanatic. Yes. Right? So he got basically shot by someone, assassin's bullet sort of thing. And they they kind of gave him the whole, you know, martyrdom treatment where right. You know, sort of, sort of MLK sort of thing, That's where it's exactly like, you know, that he 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 was he died for his cause mm-hmm. ultimately, right? And so now you have the the wreckage of the results of that in that mutant kind and human kind have to reckon with the fact that Charles Xavier or not Charles Xavier but Magneto was at least in some ways correct in that there can really never be peace between humans and mutants. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they um well one of the one of the little sub narratives that they had going on there was that because of Charles's death, uh, there there became to be a bit more sympathy or empathy towards the the mutants. Yeah, but the, but the issue, of course, has been that while they may have more empathy and sympathy for the mutants, that doesn't cover the ones of them that were actively committing what they would consider to be heinous crimes. Now, right. I personally, the way Magneto talked about it in this show, I was kind of riding with Maggie. Right <laughs> like everything I well, did was in defense. Like- <laughs> right. Right. For, for sure. And, and in the first episode, you kind of get this. So it's, it's, it's a two part sort of premiere, right? Mm-hmm. And you have this sort of introduction of uh storm coming in actually. And she say her and Bishop end up saving this uh, mutant that's been kidnapped, right? right. S- some somewhat of a, you know, sort of a, like a jubilee, but a, a guy sort of thing, right? Right, right. 
And you have a situation where, first of all, Storm comes in and ultimately shows you right then and there like she's not to be played with at all. At Do all. not play on her name at all because she will pull up. And By she way, pulled up. For those um, who don't know who that character is, the, the guy, that's uh, Roberto uh, da Costa. His uh, mutant name or code name is Sunspot. He's okay. pretty, pretty powerful. He was a member of uh, X-Force. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he, he, his, he inherited his family's, uh, uh, company, very wealthy dude. And he's still being used currently in, in the X-Men series. Just let people know who don't read the book. Yeah. That's, that's Roberto da Costa. Yeah. He was also yeah, I, a, a, a new mutant. He was also a new mutant. I was going to say, I think Sunspot was also in that ultimate, uh, mutants game. Yep. Back, remember back he in the sure day? sure was. Yo, you yeah. talking about, uh, what was the name of what that? What was that oh, shit called? So oh, so man. It was, it so, was so good. It was so dope. That X-Men game, it was like an R- action RPG. Yeah, yeah. So dope. That was so good. Legends. X-Men Legends. X-Men Legends. Yes, yeah. they had a second one too, right? Didn't they have two of them? Yeah, they had two of them. And both of yeah. them were dope. Both of them yeah. were dope. Yeah, I would play that right now. Um, so, <laughs> so of course, you know, you get this sort of introduction. They're saving Sun Sunspot or Young Sunspot mm-hmm. at this time. You 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 see something that wasn't a thing in the original series, which is Bishop shows up right yes. next to Storm, and he's kind of like a regular part of the team. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get into Scott and 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 the, sort of the the Jean Grey Scott uh, yeah. Wolverine storyline. We got to say, like, I, I got to bring this up. Like, okay, so Bishop didn't go back to his own time? Okay, so that's a great question. It's been a while since I've watched the last um, season of X-Men because it's bad and it's really difficult to, <laughs> to sit through how bad that is. So yeah. I don't remember if Bishop was in the, in the cast on that in that last shot. I remember Magneto was in the picture and the rest of the X-Men yes. that we know about, but I don't remember if Bishop was there. So if he wasn't, they haven't explained why he's back, why Bishop is back, and now a regular member. But in the comic books, through the 90s, he was a regular member. So, yeah. you know, maybe they'll explain it at some point, hopefully. He cut his hair, too. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he got the fade. It, it's, it's, it's looking fresh. Um, yeah. And then, of course, you see the X-Men, like, show up, but it's not all of them, right? Right, right. It's, um, you got uh, Scott shows up, Morph shows up. Yeah. Um, you know, and a couple of other, other people. But it's like, it's like, you know, four of the nine X-Men or whatever. Yes. And... Yes. They show up, and I, you know, it's it's dope to see Scott lead in the yeah. field, but I also see. him being put over with his powers. Because in the original X Men cartoon, and even in all the movies, they never really, uh, they never really showed him doing dope things. They just alluded that he could do much more dope things with his eyes, yeah, right? You with would his, only his, see the occasional. He, I'm wondering if that was a budget issue. Like, did, did y'all not have the money? To show his beams yeah. doing better shit, because Be- for sure. And this is why I was so impressed with how his fight scenes were written for this first episode. He's yeah. doing things where he's using the force from his eyes as a way to maneuver the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. And it's fucking it's fire, crazy. Bro. It's die. fire. It's, it's amazing. Fire. Yeah. He'll block something and because his block moves his finger to where his eye is, he could just fire the shot. Like it's so silly. It's like a one two. Yes. Yeah. Um he he used his blast to break his fall. Oh my bro. Did you see that shit? Uh, bro, listen, the conf- first of all, can we talk about the confidence in his face as he was like falling and saw how everybody else was being taken care of. He was like, I, good work. I got it. I didn't expect that. Me neither. I did not expect that. Me neither. It, 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 it made me think like, hmm. I mean, I know Captain America is a far better like martial artist and I know he's you know, more experienced in battle, but yeah. that gave me Captain America vibes. It did. It really that did. Gave bro. Me real cap vibes right there. And it I got to say, he wears it well, Scott. Yeah, does. Scott. He, Scott definitely wears the, the the man. It seems like they have kind of grown him up a bit. I guess because of the events a year after what happened to Charles Xavier, he's grown up a bit. 
he seems more comfortable in his skin. And while he seems a bit more irritated about things, you can't really blame him right? because his father figure slash mentor is out of the picture. Right. And he still got, he, he has all of these other X-Men that he has to wrangle, keep in order, keep in line. They look to him for leadership and he still has people in the group that are grown ass men like Wolverine that's been alive a lot longer than him that sometimes does his own thing. Like, look, I'm, I'm doing this. Yeah. Or got something to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got something to say. Yeah. You know? Oh, and then also, you know, for those who don't know, Jean is pregnant. Jean is pregos. Yes, she is. And you you have a situation where she, while she's still capable, it shows her using her powers. She is obviously distracted by her pregnancy, and yeah. she uh, she should be right. Yeah. So you got a, a pregnant Jean Grey. Uh, Scott is very much the leader of the X Men um, right now. Storm is. You know, such a great second in command. She was always the great XO. Always. When people talk about great XOs, she, you know, I, I think of her because yeah. to, to to Scott, like, and when she needs to lead, she can do that. Man, yeah. STFU and do what she says. <laughs> I do what she, she, she is about that command life. Yeah. She's a she's a great like articulator of her orders Mm -hmm. and she knows how to speak in duress right like how to speak in a situation that's that's crazy but she can speak like uh in a a much more authoritative figure to get her message across in that situation and scenario so she can pull rank very well she very well pulls rank very well and the thing is the power in that um because they did put her over as omega level Finally. They did. They they well they they they, they mentioned, mentioned her. It. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's an element of that where it said Omega, I think a Sentinel, right? Said Omega mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. threat or something like that. Mm-hmm. She is really, you know, not to skip around here, um, but if you if you've seen both the episodes and you know where we're going with this, but right. Magneto made a Yikes. comment about her where yeah. it was like you're the closest thing to a goddess mm-hmm. you're the closest thing to one one we have okay yeah facts so like you know facts. you she was instantly and they really put her over in those first two episodes Can so much that at the that end too? of that was so crazy go ahead so this is this is when you know um there's a certain awareness that's happening and when a company is firing um, with the synergy, that's when great things happen. So mm-hmm. currently in comic books and in the comic book culture, everyone has recognized that they've given Storm a glow up. Mm-hmm. In the X Men series, she is like unto a goddess. Now mm-hmm. it's not; it's more than just you know they they would say that as a slang or nickname or whatever. No, 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 no. The shit she's been pulling off. Is God level so much to the point, much to my chagrin, and I think it's completely unnecessary. But they've been using Thor to put her over. They've been showing, they've been putting them in the same scenes, yeah, and and trying to show things that Thor can't do that she can do. And a lot of Thor fans are really pissed off about it. I can't say that I'm not one of them. I don't think you need to do that to Thor to put Storm over. Right. You don't need to do that. You don't need to, 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 to squash him. But her profile. Has been risen. I, I I have I'm part of a lot of these comic book groups on social media, bro. Storm's name is mentioned in almost every goddamn thread that I'm seeing. Right, and this has been this way now for at least a year. So the company recognizing her popularity, they know what they, what they want to do with her as a character going forward. For them to um, put that synergy into the cartoon is brilliant because it taps into. What the their readers and the consumers are already feeling about her right now. They did the exact same thing with Wolverine. Anytime, you know, back when he was the most popular, whatever, 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 they made sure to lead with him. He got yeah. the video game. Solo video game, right? Yeah, he got yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Smart. Smart. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then before we move on from from uh, Cyclops real quick, I do want to point out the fact that also Scott has gotten a little bit of a glow up as well, along yes, with yes. Storm, yeah. where they've made him this sort of command authority. 
Yes. He is a, he is the captain of that crew. Like nobody's it's not, questioning that no shit one's now. questioning nobody's him. Even questioning Wolverine. That there were right. times where in the original series, Wolverine would literally just undermine him as a captain. Yes. Whereas in Wolverine's still Wolverine, but you don't see him undermining Scott nah, leadership. And that's nah. where you're like, okay, he has the respect of the team so much to where even if they don't like what he has to say, they're, they're going to do it. They're going to they're gonna listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that is that's a great astute observation because I noticed it too. I noticed how his authority level is high. Like, like, like he said it, so do that shit. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that shit. I like it, man. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So, uh, a couple of characters also that we haven't mentioned yet. We mentioned uh, briefly Bishop, mm-hmm. Storm, uh, now obviously Scott and Gene. There was also Jubilee and yes. Beast were yes. also introduced as well. What was your impression of both of those characters? Okay, so um, honestly, let's go with uh, Beast first. So Beast did more in these two two uh, episodes mm-hmm. than I can recall him really doing in men, in like at least two uh, or three seasons of the original series. That sh- first of all, they put over his strength. You saw what he did with the uh, the Sentinel. He flipped him by his foot like, what? I got this. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it was a smart way that he did it, too, with the yes. like momentum of, yeah. Exactly. It was and, he, and then, of course, it showed that his intelligence is more than just uh, lab intelligence. Like, mm-hmm. I'm in there with the beakers. No, no, no. On the fly, in the middle of combat, yep. he can acquire technology and utilize it against the enemy. That's 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 pretty ingenious, and that actually makes him so very helpful on the field, like in, in the field of battle, right? So, well, well, didn't they? He was locked up most of most of the first season, the first yep. season in TAS, he was, he was, right? He was right? locked up, bro. He was completely locked up. They did not get a chance to use him. They used him as a martyr to a degree because you know he was constantly referenced, and then you, every so often they would show you a scene of him in prison, or then you would see the scene when he's. Um, I recently. And well, because I started watching some of the old stuff again, he was in court. You'll see him in court, right? But right. you didn't really, you didn't see him do much. Now, after he got out, there's a few episodes where he did. You know, he was definitely involved in the mix of things and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I it just this impressed me so much with him. These two episodes. Now, Jubilee, on the other hand, is very much improved. I, I bro, I am way less annoyed. Uh, by Jubilee now, like she seems like she has been with the team now for a while. Mm-hmm. She knows her place. Yeah, she knows what what's expected of her and how she can contribute. And she fits better with this. She doesn't seem like this, still like an outsider. Because for right. a while, look that that's that was the problem with the original series. Jubilee still, after all those seasons, she still kind of felt like the outsider. She doesn't Agreed. feel like that now. Yeah, yeah, no, to to that point, um, Jubilee felt like she was much closer to adulthood yes, than yes. she was to a, a childhood. And that's why yeah. I don't think they liked her early on because mm-hmm. they were adults, right? They were right. drinking and having arguments and like, you know, doing adult type shit, right? Yes, yes. And Gene was this like teenager who wanted to tag along. It's like, you can't even drink. You can't even like, <laughs> you. they're going to kill you out here. Like we're out here we fighting for our you. lives. Yeah, we we got to protect you, you, out you, out here, you yep. know? And this Jubilee feels like I. She knows that I she knows right. this ain't no game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The way she spoke to uh, Sunspot was almost like I was just like you. Like I, I was just bro. you know kind of immature. And I ran away, but mm-hmm. now I understand what this means. I'm not what pushing this, this away. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> Jubilee right. really kind of felt like a really solid upgrade um, yeah, to Beast. Right. You know. I'm a big sort of beast, pro, like a, a archetype fan. Like I love yes. the intellectual, um, you know, someone who takes advantage of technology and, and is a, a science minded sort of individual, Absolutely. you know, uh, the character AO gray is, is primarily built around that archetype, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like TAS really used beast in the way that this series is going to use him. And the first episode showed me, that oh yeah no they're gonna use him the way that that the turtles use Donatello uh-huh. he's gonna solve all the technical stuff 
He's going to create all the cool gadgets. He had one gadget in here where it was like, I thought they were going to wait a couple episodes, but no, in the first episode, or maybe even it's a second, he's using something that's giving him information about the guy who showed up. Yeah. And it's like he's gadgeted out. So I think in the future, he's going to be the one that builds the, you know, interdimensional tech and he's going to mm-hmm. be the one that he's going to be their Reed Richards. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then of course, I love the voice of Beast. It felt very much soothing, like the original voice of Beast when I was Absolutely. a kid. It instantly took me back to my childhood. 100%, bro. It, <laughs> they did a really good job with them. So, yeah. what do you think about uh, Rogue and, uh, gambit oh wow great question um so i know the joke that was going around about her being redrawn and stuff like that and and my teenage eyes aside (laughs) i think the rogue and gambit relationship is very much still something we always wanted to see realized even as kids we wanted that realized right uh i think that rogue is like she's very much a sister of the sisterhood of the X-Men, right? Like, because you do, you do get this sort of, you know, Jean, Rogue, and Storm are sisters. And they grew up in that house together. They grew up raised by the same man together, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And so they have a bond that right. is very much apparent when they're around each other. And it's one of the, the, the cool things about the X-Men is that they're a family, right? They're, they're family. not just a yeah. team. Right. The Avengers is a team, they're exactly. a team of of adults and and people who didn't grow up together, who didn't that's, really like like each other and stuff. They just had to come together because something needed to be avenged. The X Men aren't like that. Nah. The X Men are like kids who grew up in a school who are like family. And yeah. so the rogue gambit relationship is like these these first love crushes or these teen crushes who've gotten older. But obviously, the circumstances behind Rogue haven't changed. She killed. She still can't touch anybody. Right. Um, and so. You touch one. You know, look, sh- yeah. Shout out to uh to Gambit to to being that dude and, and be able to be by her side in that sort of situation. Yeah. But for the most part, it's still the same rogue. She still can't touch anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm assuming she's still a virgin, right? I'm Probably. I'm assuming well, she's we, we don't really know that because of what happened in that uh second episode. We don't Oh really well, know yeah, that. I don't know what that was about. Yeah, well, I guess we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll yeah, get to that. We'll get to that. But the thing about Rogue is I want to address the whole she was redrawn thing. Okay. So I went back and I looked. Everybody, everybody is fixated on one scene. That is the scene where they fought apocalypse for the first time. Uh-huh. She gets knocked down uh-huh. and that angle in the back gave her cakes. She had cakes, Duncan. <laughs> she had cakes, right? So everyone after that, this this is the scene. That's the scene <laughs> everybody knows about. And yes. from then, I think people, it's a Mandela effect because I looked at them other scenes and I don't see any other scenes where she was caked up like that. Dude. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I think that I think that's what's happening here, bro. Hey, look, listen. Yeah. For all of for all the because I was a grown man when this was a, a okay the show. But for all the people that were kids that especially the little young boys, me saw that, right? He saw that. <laughs> Listen, keep hope alive. We got uh eight more episodes to go in this first season. You ain't get another shot. <laughs> 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 That's so hilarious, dog. Yeah. I mean, the adolescent version of me was definitely fixated on uh, on Rogue and Storm too. I feel like Storm was a baddie yeah, Storm, back in them yeah. days, Doc. She's still she's still gorgeous. Shout I love out, the way she's drawn. Shout and out the, to Jade Cargill for 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 oh my the goodness, essence of Storm. Like yeah, <laughs> if anybody's gonna play Storm, it has gotta be Jade. Like I, I don't even care if she's a good Jade, actor or not or good we'll actress. Figure, we'll figure it out. Um, w- one thing I will say about Storm too, and we 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 touched on her, but I did want to say this. The voice actor for or actress for Storm is so good, bro. It's the same one. I, I it, it was so like, yeah. It it almost like it almost made me like teary eyed because it was almost like she was so the personification of that voice. And and mm-hmm. from that point, I was never able to judge any of the people who played Storm ever again because they weren't that voice. They weren't that voice. to yeah. hear that again. Yeah. Was yeah. just like, oh man, like yeah, I'm not young anymore, but this kind of took me back. 
Yeah. This was me yeah. smelling a smell that made me think of the past type. And that's stuff. it. That's it. It made you feel like, oh, we back. We're we back. back. Like we're really back. back. And to hear that soothing, just special, divine feminine voice, bro. I'm done, yeah. man. I'm done. Yeah. I hope she marries T'Challa and I hope they bring him in to the show. That so and I, I, that would be so dope for them. I hope she go. Uh, well, I'm not going to get that. I'm going to get it. Right. <laughs> um, so, so the next character, obviously, we got to talk about um, is is Morph because he's the last character in the first episode that we haven't really talked about. Yeah. Um, There's a couple of side characters we probably want to mention. But mm-hmm. what did you think about the changes made to Morph? I know it's the biggest thing people are talking about right now. Why was Morph drawn so differently than what he was in the original series? So the thing people need to understand about Morph is that uh, Morph did not exist in the comic books. Morph is based off of another character named Mimic. Mimic was one of the original, original, original off-panel uh, X-Men. He could he could u- literally utilize all of their powers. He had he could use all of their powers: ice power, uh, telekinesis, uh, uh, the wings, he, he, wings, all of that shit. Mimic. But for the for the t- for the cartoon, they changed him into this character named Morph. So when we saw Morph. Uh, in the original series, he looked a certain type of way in the face. But the truth is, what everyone needs to know is, that's not how he ever really looked. He's a shapeshifter. So that blank, almost nondescript facial feature thing that they did with him right there, that's probably how he looked, and he only made himself look human to fit in with everybody else. Right. You know, yeah, he has like template face almost. Yeah, it's a it's template like a face, face. that could it, be bro. anybody's face. That's it, bro. That's it. And I think it caught people off guard. Um, because I do like I, I one thing I have noticed with that character all these years is a lot of people really misunderstood who he actually was in the comic books. Um, Morph didn't exist in the comic books. <laughs> he was he is a version of Mimic. See, and, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he's a version of Mimic. So, so, so the, this version compared to the TAS version, then what, what was your thoughts about what they did to modernize? I was less annoyed. Well? I was less annoyed, but I will say this. Some of, the, some of the things he said, it's a good thing that him and Wolverine are close like that. Mm-hmm. Because that one, that one scene where I know he, he, it was, it was a bit, more tasteless yeah it's a bit tasteless for you to, to come at logan when you know this is a, a sore spot and this is your mans who right. in the original series took a swipe at cyclops for leaving your ass right you know right. what i'm saying Which, like, i'm trying to figure out how this relates to that if mm-hmm. all of the original animated series is canon or do they are they re- retconning certain things because morph died he was killed mm-hmm. in the original episode mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of the X-Men. The very first two episodes was mm-hmm. about them, him, them going somewhere. They went on a mission, mm-hmm. all of them. And M- Morph was on the mission. Right. And something happened. A couple of people get hit. They, you know, Cyclops calls a general retreat. Right. Storm basically forces everyone's hand to make that sure that that happens. But right. in the whole scrum of the shit, one man gets left behind, which is Morph. And Wolverine said that, you know, he saw when Morph went down died, and, he, yeah. you know, he died. He he basically confirms it off panel, but they confirm that Morph and, was yep. killed. And even Jean says she can no longer sense him. I don't him. feel him. Yeah, I don't yeah. sense him anymore, yeah. right? So then you have the Mr. Sinister incident where Jean and Scott are on honeymoon and they get fucked with by Mr. Sinister and it comes to find out that Morph is alive and he brought him back to life. He's working with Mr. Sinister and his goons Mm -hmm. and like he's fighting this sort of thing. And then I think he gets free and he has this whole thing where he leaves the X-Men. He comes back, he leaves, he comes back. Like he has these guest appearances, Yes, but they never really talk about like him coming back for good. He wasn't in that final shot. No, he wasn't. Of season five. I think what happened was, um, so if I was to put together the the timeline, all right. So the last time we saw Morph in the original series, he had an epic showing where he was helping them fight, and he oh, was I turning, remember he was turning into these different 
characters using their abilities in the midst of the fight. And I was like, holy shit, more yeah. of you, you really earned some respect from me right now. At the end of that episode, though, uh, Logan assumed he was going to stay. And he said, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not ready to come back. And he left. And we didn't see him again. Right. So now, from the time Charles Xavier was taken out of commission, it's been a year since then. So what I'm assuming is, in the course of that year, maybe with the quote-unquote death of Charles Xavier, um, Morph must have come back within that year. Because it's been by, by the time we see um, this first episode, it's been a year since Charles Xavier has been gone. Right. So, so it's I probably been thinking, at least two or three years since they've seen, since Morph, Morph. probably came yes. back, right? Yes. That's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming that in the course of that time, he came back. They didn't reference it. And maybe that, you know, it's one of these things where it's sometimes it's a balance. We, we write comics. So sometimes it's a, it's a balance. How much exposition do you, re, like, or do, do you, you don't want to uh, undersell the intelligence of your the reader, or the reader or the audience by having to think that you have to spell everything out for them. So it's a balance. And maybe they, maybe they, they erred on the side of he's here. They'll just pick up on the fact it's been a year since the last, whatever he came back during that time, maybe. Um, but I think, I don't think they would have insulted anybody had they, uh, just like, like referenced, you know, him coming back and all that shit. Like, I don't think it depends on how they would do it, but I don't think they would have, because we wouldn't have these questions had they done it. Right. 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 You know? Yeah, I mean, the thing about, and, and I like the idea that Morph is here, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that he's a part of the team and everything. Because like you said, the last time we saw him, he was turning into a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, it was, he was dope on the battlefield. He's a great yeah. piece on the battlefield to yeah. have. Yeah. Um, I just hope that we get some, you're right, I agree with the whole tasteless thing with Wolverine. But yeah, Wolverine right. also has a tasteless sort of humor That's very at times. True. So right. maybe they get each other. Maybe yeah. he's the one guy. Remember, he, you know, Wolverine said he was the one guy who can make me laugh. Could laugh, that's true. That so is. his humor probably had to be really dark. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So finally, I guess there's two other characters we got to talk about. Um, one, we have to wait till the sort of the next episode in order to really discuss them. Right. But but Professor X, who obviously we, we you you mentioned it earlier, he's yeah. not here. He's murdered. Uh, by um, who'd they say killed him? Gyric. It was guy. It was either Gyric or uh, Boulevard, Boulevard Trask. It was yeah, Trash. Those. He was yeah. He was either Trask or Gyric, but one of the two put the bullet in old Charles and um, you know, slid on him. <laughs> now I, I will say this: I am not the greatest Charles Xavier fan. I feel like he's too. You know, and I don't say this in a disparaging way, so please right. don't misunderstand. But he's too Martin, not enough Malcolm for me. Yes. And I respect, while I respect the approach of both, I think they are both necessary in, in a functioning sort of peaceful Gosh. democracy. Some things you can't just let slide. And I think Charles was too quick to be like, oh, the humans are just, you know, they, they just don't know any better. It's like, yeah, they're still killing us, though. Right, they're still, they're still like us, though, trying to kill us. We still got to do something to make sure they don't. Tr- and Magneto was a little bit too Malcolm and not enough yeah. Martin, That's right? True. By true. any means necessary, don't mean you kill civilians, right? Exactly. Like, so exactly. you, 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 there is a, um, an element of both of them had unrealistic views that were compatible with the reality that they found themselves in. Right. And when Charles is now no longer here, it makes room for Magneto yeah. and Magneto showing back up after Charles had been killed. Now, in, in the original final shot, mm-hmm. they see Charles leave on the ship, right? Yes. To go back to the Shi'ar Empire. Mm-hmm. Now, in this... And, and in that scene, in the original shot, in the final shot, you had Magneto standing with the X-Men as they stood yes. in unison. Yes. And Charles had basically kind of left him in. I don't know if he came and took charge, but in this one, they basically said, no, no, no. Charles left him everything. Yeah. He didn't leave y'all anything. <laughs> right? Like, that's the hilarious thing about this. Is that Charles. Charles- Charles didn't leave them anything. He just gave it all to Magneto. It was like, Her damn. Bag, Chuck. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what do you think about the Professor X development? How they handled that? Well, what are your thoughts on where they went with this? Okay, so I try to separate the Professor X from the animated series from what I know of Professor X in the comic book as much as possible. Because over the course of his, the lifespan of his character, he has done things that has made me see him in a, in a different light uh, where I saw Magneto as being much more pure than him. Everything from his secretly lusting for Jean as when she was a teenager. Yeah. He um, did have that he, sketchy bad paperwork shit vibe going on. And then from hiding from from Scott and 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 Alex that they had another brother. Um, well, didn't were, he wipe everyone's memory on yeah, Earth yeah. for some shit that he did or something yeah, like that? Like Charles did a lot of shit that was to me that was basically his outward public uh, persona was of this MLK Gandhi. You know, but when you st- when they start, I don't know why the writers chose to do it. I, I don't know what their motive was, but over the years, you started to see the darker side of him. And I'm not even talking about when his his um, mentality mixed in with Magneto's when he shut Magneto's brain down and formed onslaught. I'm talking about before all of this, before the um, all new, all different X Men, he was doing shady shit. He had sent the team over to Krakoa. And didn't even tell no. He had he had an X Men team before the team that we get introduced to with Gene, Scott, Bobby, uh, 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 Beast. He had a team before then. He sent yeah. them over there, and they wasn't prepared. They wasn't prepared to fight that thing over there. So it's a lot of things Charles has done. But I separate that Charles from this Charles because this Charles hasn't done any of those things. He hasn't done any of those. Are we sure? Well, if you if we're only going off the canon of the animated series. They never alluded to him having a crush on Jane when she was a teenager. He okay, was that's guy. fair. Um, he we don't know about the uh the Krakoa thing. I don't I don't believe they I have to go back and watch. Well, in Cold Front, if you remember mm-hmm. that episode when they actually met up with Bobby again, um oh, Bobby yeah. did allude to the fact that the professor wasn't always like the objective. He had favorites, yeah, right? True. Like he had favoritism and he was overly disciplinarian. And that's there was true. a lot of things that like the people who things. left his team felt like, oh, okay. Um, now, obviously you look at Bobby's track record. I mean, he's not the fucking spitting image of, 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 you know, discipline or anything like yeah, that. Right. Right, right. But it it also speaks to a lot of people who had an issue with, Charles and yeah. you know yeah. Archangel sure. left and Nightcrawler left and Colossus left and a lot of people left. Sure, sure. Um, and again, I'm sure he was. See, the thing is, a lot of that show was made for kids, so they wasn't gonna. If they was gonna give Charles some uh, negative traits, it definitely wasn't gonna be what the comic books did because the comic books really ran his character through the mud to the point where when he tried to come back. Scott was like, nah, I'll run this team now. If you want to be here, you want to be in an advisory position, fine, but you can't stay here. Basically, you can't stay at the mansion. Wow. No, I'm, 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 I'm with you. And yeah. For, and, for, and for those that, 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 that maybe didn't follow that, the eventual um, outcome of that story, eventually Scott kills Charles. So I'm just saying, <laughs> this guy isn't that this is an alternate reality obviously and they're missing him and for 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 the record mm -hmm. i don't mean to cut you off but you can we specify which alternate reality this is this is not marvel 616 no this is not 616 this is actually marvel 1660 yes right yes is that what this is i believe it is i Uh, think so you know what no i think 1660 is the ultimate Ultimate. oh yeah 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 anna made it let's let's get that right now yeah for sure men series universe designation this is earth 92131 okay yeah so now uh these things are this is these are important to know because a lot of the times, um, people confuse feats, um, uh, uh, events that happened in some alternate version with the six one six mainline continuity, and and 
especially since Marvel spent the last, what, two years uh, drilling into the whole multiverse thing of, of all of this. We want to make sure that I, I don't want to impugn this Charles with the Charles of uh, the 616 because right. he's kind of an ass. Um, yeah. He's kind of an ass. Um, but I think that him not being there but still being a presence, um, I liked it. I liked the way they did it. I like the way you did it, you know? So, of course, him not being there now leads the opening for Magneto. And this is uh, Eric Magnus Magneto. Yes. Um, There's different versions of Magneto, right? Like, because I had never heard him called Magnus until the cartoon. Not that Mm -hmm. I was really into the comics, but I know Mm -hmm. the comic version, 616, is a slightly different name, slightly different sort of origin story, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, ba- basically, uh, here's the things that are the same, and he actually referenced this in the in the series, to, in the, well, in the new one of the new episodes. He was Jewish during the Holocaust, and um, the Nazis did what they did. Of course, everybody knows what they did, and they killed his entire family. Um, so he had already experienced what it was like to be a part of a marginalized group that the people there were trying to exterminate. He'd already been through that. And then when his mutant abilities showed up, he now had the indignity of going through that twice. Mm. So if people want to know why Maggie was so upset, why he, he carried things the way he carried it, he had already gone through this. And to see it happening again, when he said never again, that's what the fuck he meant. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. I liked his um, I liked his justification as for why he wanted to to honor Charles. Yes. yes, this idea of like this sort of silent understanding that Charles kind of knew mm-hmm. that if if that had happened to him, then the person who needed to step in was the person who probably believed that that would happen to him. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I do like the idea of a face turn for Magneto, a public face turn. Look, public face turn. this has happened for a couple of people, mm-hmm. but I think one of the more famous ones is um, uh, Lex Luthor. Yes. Right? Lex yes. Luthor uh, healed a face turn. Mm-hmm. And I think he's still a, a face now, right? He's still a face. Folks, I'm not sure, but I know for a while he was. I don't know if they, you know, everything goes back to the status quo eventually, but I don't know if he went back to that yet. But I know for a little while he was. Um, yeah. And with Maggie, Maggie has had a couple of face turns over the course of time. But at, at the same time, I, I would, I've would i often argued that even when he was a quote-unquote heel, he had justifications that even led that in doubt, put that in doubt. Yeah. Like, is he, is there, like, like you mentioned earlier in, in this episode where you talked about how the whole, these humans have done things that are so egregious. You can't just paper wallpaper it over with. They don't know any better. Or they did that. Nah, B. Nah. And you and learn I, from consequences, and they have to that. be taught consequences. Facts. Like, for instance, yeah. you know not to go close to the stove as a kid. That when you get burnt, when you get burnt. So with Maggie, um, he's he's punishment. He's punishment. While you sat there wanted to coddle these sapiens. Maggie was like, look, I've already seen the face of them twice. I see, I've see, i seen what they're capable of. And it's something he said in the very first, or was it the third? I think it may have been the third episode of the original series where they showed the flashback when Charles first met Maggie. And Maggie was like, well, Charles was like, hey, man, don't, don't go overboard. We come to save these people. They don't know any better. We have to learn how to get along. Everybody got to learn how to get along. He said, get along with them. Look at them, Charles. They can't even get along with themselves. Bro, that was a bar. Oh, yeah. That that's a, a that's an apocalypse level bar right there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I, I, I mean, look, I, I, they're going to bring apocalypse. Not to jump way ahead of this, but they're they going to bring apocalypse in. They have to. They Whoever voices him, <laughs> I only ask that you just honor the mood and the spirit. But you know who I would want to do it? Oh. Christopher Judge. Yo, if Christopher Judge 
is apocalypse yo i'm gonna lose it he would be his voice would be so amazing bro i just jesus man that's the person i want to do it now they're probably not gonna have him do it um you know i also i I like michael dorn too i think he's got a great voice for it but he's already battle beast in um in the invincible series so i don't know if 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 he'll you know want to do two anime but he does a lot of voiceover work he was also a a general he was the general for the triceratons in tmnt 2012 oh yeah yo you know what he might listen he he, he's a voice actor so he's gonna go where they pay him they yeah, writing, yeah. writing the check. You know what I'm Were they so, writing them checks, dog? Uh, get yeah. them checks, Mike. Get the yeah. checks. Um, one other character we, I guess we, we want to call him a character is mm-hmm. the Friends of Humanity. They're back. They're back, and they. So I got to say, their representation here was pretty clean, it's pretty um, good. And 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 the thing about it is, there's nothing like you know people are quick to toss the word woke around. I got to tell you guys. X Men has always been well. It was woke in the nineties. It was woke oh, in yeah. 90s. So Trust I me. didn't see a change with the Friends of Humanity was still on the bullshit. They were still on the bullshit, and I feel like this version of them is unassailable as far as uh, uh, pop culture commentary because they, they y'all can't say oh they made them worse because of the nope. They were bad then too. They were oh, bad yeah. then too. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they would. Uh, they were openly racist and yes. bigoted and homophobic yes. and like they were everything that you know we see in society today. That yeah. is just like okay, dog. Like you, you're going to like that representation was closer than it wasn't. And Agreed. I think Agreed. for those people who are going to complain about anything woke about the X Men, <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree, wrong dog. Because that yeah. show has always been quote unquote progressive, quote unquote always. liberal. It has always been that way. It's always In been fact, about acceptance uh, and inclusion. And yeah, of the most that. fringe type of thing. Yes. So, like, <laughs> yes. you know, that yes. is definitely something that you're not going to get any sympathy from their hardcore audiences from. Nah. Having said that, though, I did like the fact that who Executioner was the guy's name. Executioner. Um, they kind of put him over a little bit. They did, Scott, bro. Scott they took did. A, um, uh, a, a, a DQ sort of win. <laughs> he did. A, a, against uh, Executioner. <laughs> Executioner got a, a DQ loss. But here's the issue, right? All you have to do is make a hero bleed, and you're That's putting it. a villain over. That's it. You're putting a heel over by making the the baby face That's suffer. All you have to do, bro. That's all you have to do, and the fans will love you by hating you for it, which yep. is why They'll that one. They'll see you as a threat. They'll see you yeah. as a threat. So it's that great. was pretty cool. The fight yeah. against the Sentinels was amazing. Yes. Teamwork, finally, bro. We got to see some crazy teamwork. Yeah, teamwork. The part where I think it was wolverine char no gambit charged wolverine's claws oh my goodness why he rode piggyback on the man's back like here yes um i thought it was dope that uh you had a situation where first of all when they fell out of the plane like you said earlier there was that scene where they're all falling and then gene and or not gene um rogue and storm look at each other Mm -hmm. they give each other the nod like yeah we're used to saving these fools and they go around like catching all the people who can't fly and then morph turns into just a flying mutant he turns into archangel yeah bro it was so amazing bro. (laughs) and then of course scott's like oh i'm I'm too much the shit to be saved by anyone so he uses his eye vision power to break his fall my goodness how many times must he have done that in that year that that has like obviously he he was too confident, bro. You, when you saw it, the look on his face, he was too confident. Like, I'm not, I'm really not in any danger, folks. Like, I'm God, good. <laughs> it was really amazing, bro. And it lets me know, he his powers are as good as he can think up yeah. ways to use them. Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I, 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 I started out being a, a, such a huge fan of the X-Men. Because you guys got to remember, I didn't really, when I first started reading comics, I didn't know who the X-Men was. I knew who Spider-Man was. And the reason why, um, I, I got introduced to them was through the Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, Spider-Man, his amazing friends. Mm-hmm. There's, there's an episode where Firestar and Bobby 
who were at, who were X Men. They they were trained at the mansion because they're mutants. They went back for a class reunion, and it just so happens that the Juggernaut was headed there to to, to put boots to asses, mm-hmm. you know, to break break shit up. And that's when I was introduced to the X Men. So after that, I started you know digging into them, digging into them even more. They have one of the things about them that I love is the danger room aspect of how they develop their powers and train is it's, it's so iconic to who they are as an IP. You don't see that with Avengers. You don't see that with the defenders, like the training aspect of it. But with, with the X-Men, you see they're in the danger room. They go up against these, these various scenarios. They have to work as a team or they can go in there individually and, and, and work on their individual skills. That's a big part of who and what they are. Let the record show that the danger room is a direct derivative of the holodeck. Yes, and is. we love it. And we yes. love it. And, and like, we love it. The danger room is such an amazing concept for a team of mutants that have to learn how to use their powers. Yeah. And, you know, I will just take a comic of them doing danger room training. You know, Man. I'll just seriously, like I'm, I'm all for that. Um, uh, let's see here. Easter eggs. So a couple of things, a daily bugled newspaper, right? <laughs> Did you see that? I saw it. That was so dope. I was like, wait a minute. Are we going to get Spider-Man at some point? <laughs> um, or who is the team that did this? I know they fired their, their kind of showrunner recently. Yeah, they, they fired um, uh, Are we going to get a Spider-Man 97? Well, I can tell you this much for nothing. Because that was amazing. What an amazing yeah. show. Yeah. It, it, listen, if, if, and if they do that, um, I'd be highly appreciative. <laughs> me too. And unfortunately, you can't do this with you know something like Batman the Animated Series because you know Kevin is no longer with us. And and yeah, and yeah. Mark said if Kevin's not here, he's not I'm doing not it, which I either. understand. You yeah, guys have yeah. absolutely been retired to the Hall of Fame, and no one. Max. But if they ever did want to remake the animated series for Batman, X Men ninety seven is showing there's an audience for it. Oh, 100%, bro. 100%. Because I would watch it. I would watch If you remade I'm, everything from my childhood, including the original Power Rangers and the original Pokemon over, you could basically give a lot of these grown-ass children our childhoods <laughs> back. That's a fact. That's a fact. I would watch it so much, my eyes would bleed. So Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. Also, Morlock sighting. More like sighting. Yep. We saw Callisto and Leech at the very beginning of the episode. Yeah. Right. So let me ask you this question. Did mm-hmm. Callisto ever re-battle Storm for control of the Morlocks? No. She gave her... Um, there's a Christmas episode of uh, um, the original series. She gave her... Because Storm wasn't really being a leader down there. She barely spent any time down there with him. They was going through shit. Callisto, she left Callisto in charge. But in that Christmas episode, she just gave her a full look. This is you you with these folks. These are your people. They look to you. I'm up in the... Because, you know, they asked a, a really good question. Magneto asked a really good question in one of these episodes of the newest show about how come you just ain't... I'm just saying, how come you just ain't offer them uh, away all that money Charles got? Get them about them sewers, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, but then again, this is goes to show you that Charles, like a lot of millionaires and billionaires, have blind spots that yes. ultimately they're not going to see everyone. They can't help everyone, and I, I bet sure. you that just fell into, you know, one of Charles and Aurora's blind spots. But I, I will say this: some of the things I think, uh, yeah, I remember the shit that Charles was dealing with because I don't. It's not it's not one of these things where with all his money, Charles was on a yacht somewhere eating Grey Poupon and shit. Nah, Charles was dealing with world altering events on a regular basis. So I don't know if we can judge him too harshly. No, no. Make that a priority, you know? No, I wouldn't. But I will say this. If you want to put over Storm as a a, a leader that's equivalent to Cyclops, which I do mm-hmm. believe that she is. Too. Um, you give her somewhat of her own army, and I think they they could have written it to where the Morlocks were still loyal to Storm, right. and should have given Storm a way to like be her own sort of Professor Xavier, 
have her own sort of environment for the Morlocks where she teaches mm-hmm. them acceptance and stuff like that. I think there was an unexplored thread there. They could have done that, especially since in the, unlike the comic books, there's no blue team and gold team, right? So in the comic books, there's oh. a blue team and gold team where yeah. Storm was the leader of the, I believe, the blue team. Mm-hmm. And and Scott was the leader of the gold team, I believe. So mm-hmm. they didn't have that in the cartoon. So they could have theoretically... There's space in that mansion. They yeah, put them up in there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, th- there was room. Uh, there you was know, room. and there should be. I think you know it, you could retcon that now. Recently, even now, after the first two episodes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and probably have it to where the Morlocks will move into the mansion at some yeah, point, which they should. It's right. um, a photo of the original X Men. Oh yeah, bro, that was a that was a dope Easter egg because it's like, when was y'all this? Like, because think about it. They didn't really dive into, like, they, they only referenced it in the original series, but Bobby, yes. he came back. But when you Well, saw they showed it like a flashback in the original series yes, of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? They absolutely did. But look at the outfits, though. That's canon. That's yes. That's canon. <laughs> yeah, that was so crazy. Um, and you, you, some of the original X Men in there. Um, you know, obviously Wolverine wasn't there. No. Um, but they had Gene, Scott, Beast. Archangel wow. and Iceman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, and then finally, uh, a flashback from the from an, an episode in the original series recreated. Did you see that? Yes. That bro, was weird. Oh, so weird, bro. That was weird. That's Cause so that weird. was like, I know what this scene is, but I know it didn't look like that. But right, oh, right. that's what that scene is. So right. that was pretty crazy. Um, and then finally. The Fox Kids outro. Yo, when that when that when that when I saw that, I, I leaned back <laughs> in my bed like, y'all 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 just y'all spoiling us right now. Like, is that yeah. what you're doing? You're spoiling us right now. You making up for a lot of shit that you probably didn't do right right now. <laughs> yeah, dog. I'm telling you, that was amazing. And I sat through the whole thing. I thought it was uh, well done. Finally, uh, we're into the the second episode.